Hello, I'm Nancy Perlman. On this edition of Econews, we explored the Oromia region of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. This vast country in East Africa has a rich cultural and natural history. Stay with us as we see wildlife in the Bali Mountains National Park, learn about the Oromo people, and travel to the source of coffee. <music> We can find very endemic animals, endemic birds, endemic kinds of trees. We are beginning our adventure in the park where we're going to go for a hike for a few miles. So we're going to the trailhead right now. at the headquarters of the Bali Mountains National Park. Our tour guide is going to describe some of the flora and fauna that we're going to be seeing. My name is Armaina Galling. I'm a tour guide here in Bali Mountain National Park. Tell us how big a park it is and what we're going to be seeing. Now here we are to the headquarters of Bali Mountain National Park. The Bali Mountain National Park is established in 1978. The main purpose for the establishment is to conserve the two endangered uh, mammals. Those are Ethiopia wolf and mountain yala, which is this Bali Mountain National Park is mostly known by. It covers 2,165 kilometers square, and it's divided into five major parts, depends on its vegetational distribution. We are to the headquarters of the Bali Mountain National Park, and to this area, there are two vegetation zones. That means the first vegetation zones of the park 
Those are the Geise grasslands, the northern part of the national park, and the other one is the woodland part of the park. The third part of the national park is the Sanity Plateau, which is the largest Afro-Alpine area in the continent. The Harina Forest is the tropical uh, rainforest, the largest cloud forest in Ethiopia. Other, the fifth part of the national park is the moorland part of the park. We come to see the animals, the warthogs, the antelope. What's the special one that's found here? The special ones found here are mountain nialas, minelik pushback, those which are endemic to Ethiopia. Let's go hike and see some more because I just love being in this beautiful ecosystem. Okay, let's go. This is Hygienia abyssinica. It is juniperus. It's the one which covers this, the woodland part of the national park. It is one of the endemic tree we have here in Ethiopia. Hygienia abyssinica is medicinal plant. It has medicinal value. This is Solanium marginatum. It is another endemic plant. And this Solanium uh, marginatum is one of tomato family. And the animals like mountain niala and some other antelopes, they used to eat this solanium plant. To the right hand side, there are the mountains which are found in Bale Mountains National Park. The mountains have a chain and the second highest point of Ethiopia is also found here in Bale Mountains National Park. It is about 4,377 meters. I'm on the Sanati Plateau at over 11,000 feet, looking at the highest mountain in the national park. It's a little breezy, a little cool, but it's still comfortable and beautiful. There are many different conservationists and environmentalists from around the world coming here to do research. Scientists from Germany, South Africa, the United States. What are they trying to discover? Actually, the Bali Mountains National Park is it's the best place for researchers and different wildlife, like plants. Well, if we take plants, there are about more than 1,600 plant species are, which are scientifically identified here in Bali Mountains. From this number, 160 of them are endemic to Ethiopia. So most researchers, they came here to the Bale Mountains to research about plants, bird life, and any wildlife. There are many tourism potentials which are found here in Bale Mountains National Park. From September until March is the best time to visit in Bale Mountains. That's the end of the rainy season and all over the Bali Mountains is green and flowers and beautiful. In our brief visit here, we've taken a short walk and yet we've seen some wonderful plants and animals. There's so much more. If we stayed longer, we could take more hikes. We could even go backpacking and camp out or take a horse trek or stay in the lodge and be able to go out for walks every day to see so much more. The National Museum of Ethiopia was established in 1944, especially to house archaeological collections. But it also has ethnographic collections and fossils and remains of early humans. This room has skeletons from many early animals, from horses to crocodiles, hippopotamus, wild pigs. You can see how large they were. In 1974, paleoanthropologist Donald Johansson discovered Lucy, an Australopithecus afarensis, the predecessor to Homo sapien. 
the various fossil parts and they have created a skeleton showing how small she was. I'm uh, Dawit Taraga from this tour and we will discover uh, one of the regional states in Ethiopia that is Oromia. Here in Ethiopia we have nine regional national states. From that this Oromia regional state is one and the biggest and have many in number. The Oromo Cultural Center in Addis Ababa has statues and artifacts from the Oromo people, one of the hundred ethnic groups in this country. With me is Bertikan Jima. She is the artist in residence here at the Oromo Cultural Center. And we can see beautiful, gorgeous pictures that you've painted of some of the most famous runners in the world, world-class Ethiopian distance runners. But she also has here some of the traditional clothing with the beautiful designs. Welcome to Oromo Cultural Center. My name is Daniel Ressa. I'm head for the Department of Conservation and Preservation of Heritage. Oromo is one of the largest ethnic group and this building, it is built to represent the Oromo culture in its totality. The shape of the center represented the Oromo cultural tree, that is sycamore tree. And one, one important point I would like, you know, is that you observe in this center, the important figures are all manifested in the center as much as possible. The statues in front represent different stages of life. All sons born from zero to eight years are the Dabalis. They are under the care of the mothers. Where they are under the care of their mother, they observe what her mother do in the house. And then, at the end of the year, they will transcend to the Gamme stage. Koka Lake is one of the Rift Valley lakes. Here, the marabou stork nest. And they don't seem to mind the human activity the cattle grazing and watering, and yeah. people fishing. I'm here at the Safamar Cave, named after a saint. Here, the local people, both Muslim and Christian, come and pray three times a year for rain. It's over 10 miles in length. We're gonna walk a short section. is the area where uh, called Gulanta uh, Hanamako. Hayumako Radi, they give for all people and they all people eat and drink and dance and uh, uh, present the presentation for the gods that already have helped them. This special area. Yes. الرحمن الرحيم سبحان الذي عصر بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلا المسجد الحرام
Museum specializes in local history of this area. There are exhibits of the kings from the 18 and 1900s. There are ethnographic collections featuring over six groups of people and of course the natural history. Welcome to Jima Museum. My name is Kirkur Tasfai. I'm guide in Jima Museum. Our museum is uh, one of the biggest museums in the southwestern part of Ethiopia. Jima and the surrounding. We can get also traditional musical instruments and some gifts from different parts of the world. The whole historical background and the whole household utensils of Abu Jifa, or the former king of Jima. Abu Jifa was the king of Jima who was born in 1860. He was one of the tallest or exceptionally tall man and he had ruled Jima for 55 years. The driver of the administrator of the Goma region has just delivered this absolutely beautiful tray which we can use in a coffee ceremony. 50 cups can be served from this beautiful piece of wood that's been carved and they are presenting it to us as a gift. I thank you so very much. Please thank all of your people. It's very nice. We have arranged uh, over 200 villagers for a coffee ceremony where coffee is originated, especially the coffee arabica originated place in Jima. We're going to find out about coffee arabica, see the plants, see the nursery, meet the people who grow the plants, and enjoy this wonderful drink. We are in the nursery where the government is growing coffee plants. Some are in the ground, some are in the containers ready to be sold to the farmers. Along the pathway is grass, which is used for soil conservation. Along the other pathways are endemic trees found in Ethiopia to serve as a windbreak. We trained our farmers to plant coffee like this. This is all coffee arabica. Orgomia produce all produce coffee arabica, especially organic coffee. No one use pesticide, herbicide, or fungicide. Oromia far all Oromia farmers produce organic coffee. Uh, what coffee arabica makes special is, especially in our country, which uh, makes the difference from other country is, we have different taste and aroma of coffee in different zones and the different warada as well as different uh, peasant association. Uh, here in Jimma zone, Jimma zone's coffee is known by the brand Jimmu coffee. We're in the Choche area and there is a special ceremony for us here at the place where coffee arabica was originally discovered and developed. The villagers are gathering for us. I am so honored to be here with the other dignitaries. This is an exciting day. And I'm also executive producer and host of Eco News Television. Eco News is the longest running environmental program in the United States. It's produced by an NGO called Educational Communications. We are on 50 stations in 21 states, 19 million homes. Every show is going to have 300 airings, so we are promoting ecotourism in Ethiopia.
This is one of the local coffee farmers. Thank you so very much for this wonderful ceremony. Okay. This girl, especially this uh, this green garment or picture, is already show the character, the character of Jimma or uh, ascendancy or the that already uh, has this implication. The woman wears such a kind of clothes, and the wives, the elders, the fathers are wearing such a kind of clothes. And then when the coffee ceremony held in the house or anywhere on the in the marriage uh, in the because listen, we just wear these very nice clothes. My gift, she gave me. They're beautiful. She was wearing it. She gave it to me. She was wearing this, and she gave it as a gift to me. is the owner of the beehives. I'm so pleased to see women having businesses. We have here the head of the GMAT agricultural zone where they are raising bees and honey. In fact, they are, these are the farmers uh, honey production area. They are just producing honey in, uh, together with development of coffee. So the, the farmers are just, they have many choices in this area and they are developing coffee cereal crops and then the beehives especially the cattle production too do the bees help pollinate the coffee of course yeah so there's a very good symbiotic relationship you need the bees if you're also going to have the honey yeah and if you're also going to have the coffee yeah, yeah. so coffee and beehives are always go together uh, because the bee are just uh, harvesting the for their honey production through this process the hybridization of uh, or pollen grain from one coffee type to the other undertaken. I'm amazed. I'm here standing around these beehives. They're not <laughs> biting me. They are very safe. They are, this season is somewhat, they are weak in this season. Are they a local bee or bee endemic to Ethiopia? Yeah, endemic to Ethiopia. The bees are important to the coffee growing because they do the pollination and you also get honey. I'm here at the home of the bee farm. The bees are used to pollinate the coffee and they make this fresh organic honey. It is, I think, mm, oh my God, mm, delicious. <laughs> Sell it in America. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. organic. Salad. Organic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I am being presented by the elders here, this wonderful coffee, the origin of coffee Arabica from the Jima zone. This is so nice. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. We will present this to many different people in America to have them realize that they need to be drinking only this coffee. Yes, 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 we will do so. Thank you so 
I'm Dawit Taraga from this tour company and we have seen some of the attractions of Ethiopia. I hope you'll come back to Ethiopia again and again. The Oromia region of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia here in East Africa is a fascinating place. I've enjoyed our trip. We've had a great time meeting the local people, seeing wildlife in its natural setting, and going to the area where coffee Arabica originated. On behalf of Educational Communications and Econews, I'm Nancy Perlman wishing you a natural, unspoiled environment.